Hello, and welcome to Writing JavaScript that implements the binding pattern in Visual Studio LightSwitch. My name is Michael Washington of the LightSwitch help website.com. Covered in this module, we will explain data binding, cover data binding using JavaScript, cover data binding in the LightSwitch HTML client, specifically covering the data bind method and the add change listener method. A key component in traditional data binding is the iNotify property change interface that raises an event when anything changes a property that implements the interface. You may have heard about the iNotify property change interface in Silverlight and WPF, and those technologies is implemented as part of the MVVM pattern, which stands for Model View View Model. In LightSwitch, the binding pattern has several advantages in that it allows you to create large, robust, and well-structured applications. Essentially, you have a value that controls bound to it using data binding code. When the value changes, a notification is automatically sent and the controls are automatically updated without the need to write additional code to explicitly update the controls. There are several advantages to using the data binding pattern, including the ability to centralize the validation and persistence of a value. This allows you to avoid cumbersome and potentially confusing and repetitive code. There are several JavaScript data binding frameworks. Knockout is a popular JavaScript binding framework. It requires you to create HTML markup and an integrated view and view model that you must carefully craft without making any typos. You will find that because JavaScript does not have a strongly typed design time compiler, every line of code you write comes at a price that grows exponentially the larger your application gets. With LightSwitch, you can implement real-time instant updates of controls with no postbacks using only three lines of code. Two methods to bind data will be explored, data bind and add change listener. Data bind is a function that actually implements add change listener. Data bind provides the advantage in that it parses the input path you specify and creates change notifications. Each change notification will raise a callback function that you specify in the data bind constructor. Add change listener, on the other hand, will just bind to the element that you specify. Add change listener has the advantage that, unlike data bind, it does not require a content item, so it can be used in entity code that does not have a content item. To allow the data binding events to be visualized, we will employ the JavaScript plugin called Toaster. Let us now look at an example using the data bind method. Let us start with a simple application that allows us to create a person save the person and view and edit the person. We will now return to Visual Studio Light Switch. We will open the person detail screen. We can see that it is bound to the person object which contains a first name property and a last name property. We can click on the Rows Layout Details tab and then click Edit Post Render Code. This allows us to create the code to bind to our value. The content item has a data bind method that requires you to specify a binding path and a callback. For our binding path, we will bind to value.firstName. We will then specify the callback function and inside this code, we can specify the code that will run when the new value is raised. We will create a variable called new first name that will be bound to the new value. We will then create another variable, updated first name only, which will construct a message. We will then display this message in the toaster plugin. We will now run the application. When we navigate to the detail screen, you will see that the toaster message is displayed 
because the binding is invoked. When we change a value and simply tap away, the toaster message is displayed and the binding is updated even though we have not done a postback. Let us take another look at the data binding code implemented. Notice that the initial scope is the entire people entity that consists of first name and last name. But in this case we are only binding to the first name property because we set the data binding code to value first name. Let us now look at an example using the addChangeListener method. Returning to Visual Studio, in the server project we have access to the people table. When we open this up we see that at the bottom we have a server tab and a client tab. When we create code in the client tab it is in JavaScript. We click the client tab and select the created method. It is here that we can put in the code for our add change listener. Notice that we are binding to the last name property. Inside the method we can insert the code to display a change in the last name property in the toaster pop-up. Now let's run the application. We will add a new person Notice that when we simply tab out of a field, the change notification is fired. We have not pressed enter, nor have we caused a postback. Also, any further changes will also cause the binding to fire. Looking at the code implemented, we can see that while deep nesting is not available, as with the data bind method, we still have access to the individual fields of the entity. To help you decide what method to implement, let us recap the limitations of each of the methods. Data bind requires a content item, and you do not have that in a screen or entity method unless you employ the screen find content item method. With add change listener, it does not have the ability to specify a binding path to listen to nested data. I would like to thank LightSwitch team members Joe and Steven for their valuable assistance. I would also like to give special thanks to TechSmith for providing the use of Camtasia Studio for this presentation. This has been a presentation of the LightSwitchHelpWebsite.com. Thanks for watching.